what to make of France in this six nations. Are they bothered? Elko doesn't think so. And it was even the topic of a conversation on Jim Hamilton's podcast this week when he spoke to Stuart Hogg and Bernard Jackman. Anyway, come see, come sir. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. I'm going to be with you throughout the championship. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And today I'm going to be looking at what I think the France team will be to face Italy on Sunday in Lille. Now, I was at Lille during the Rugby World Cup. They had a lot of England games there. So I'm going to tag some of my Rugby World Cup content up there. The daily vlogs were so much fun to make. Go and check some of those out if you haven't seen them already. But just Lille in itself, not historically a rugby town. And it's just kind of scary, the sort of growth that's available in France, that they could put some World Cup games there and fill that stadium out for every single game. Massive untapped market still in France. So um, even though they're not going that well, this Six Nations, the future, I'm sure, is going to be bright if they manage it well. Now then, how did they play against Scotland? As I mentioned in the intro there, didn't seem like they cared all that much. They failed to get momentum through big parts of the game. Their kicking game wasn't really on song. A lot of unforced errors. Elko and myself talked about it in detail, which I'll link up there as well, digging into everything that happened in that game, including that try in the final moments, or that not try, I should say. Now, some squad updates. Um, Gregory Aldrich sadly injured during the Scotland game. And I believe he was certainly out for this week. I think it's the championship. I think it's quite a bad one. Charles Olivon is named captain in uh, in his place. Somebody who, you know, people thought maybe would have got the captaincy ahead of Aldrich in the first place. Called into the squad a 19-year-old back rower, Marco Gazzotti, along with Maxime Lamoth, who is a hooker from Bordeaux, and Alex Burin which is an interesting one, 24-year-old prop playing for Agen in Pro D2. Just imagine if somebody got selected into the England squad from the championship. I, that's a very long way from happening, I think. Very long way. Okay, let's get into the selection and what I think France will do for this week against Italy, starting with the forwards. And these are the players I think will definitely keep their place after the Scotland game, Cyril by Cyril's definitely one of, if not the best loose heads in the world. And although he's not setting the world alight per se by his standards, he's still playing very well. Um, Francois Croix and Captain Olivon, obviously keeping their places in the back row. Uh, as I said, Audrey out injured. Now, two, three, four, five. I think Malvaca hasn't really shown this championship. His line out throwing has not been absolutely on point. Maybe they start with Marchant instead, go for a more slightly conservative, more breakdown orientated player from the from the start. I thought Antonio was a bit off colour in the Scotland game. I thought he lost the scrum battle to Schumann. Was he missing an enormous second row behind him that he's normally used to? Um, either way, I just thought he looked a little bit off colour. And then the second row is Waki Gebrelag. Did it really work? I'm not sure. Neither really stood out for me. So there's question marks there. Do they bring him back? Bring back in one of their huge second rows to bolster the scrum. They've got good line out options, you know. Cross and Olive on are both good line out forwards as well. So this is what I think. This is what I think they'll do. I think they'll go in Marchand. I think it's time for a change there. And I think Oldegaeri has been really good off the bench. I think he's come on and scrummaged really aggressively. And I think he deserves a start. And to help him, We'll like just have big old Roman Tarfanua behind him, who I believe is going to be back fit and available. He's certainly in the squad still this week. Paired with him, Gabriel Arc, who's he's been very, very solid, I think. You know, he's he's done a good job. And Rumar to come in at number eight, where he's been playing a lot of rugby this year. Listed as a flanker quite often, but he's played a lot at number eight this year. So I expect him to come in off the bench um, to play eight. Okay, moving on to the backs. What do we have here? Jalibert was maybe a little bit dodgy in the game <laughs> against Scotland in various ways, but the backups, the, the players behind him are all very young, and Jalibert has proven many times that he's a quality player. So I think he'll keep his place. BLBRE, the moment that won the match, you can't really drop him after that, I don't believe. Gail Fiku, man of the match, so he definitely keeps his place. And then 
two world-class operators in Peno and Ramos. Even though I don't think either of them really shone, they, they got to keep their places for sure. Now, the question marks are Luku, who's not set the world alight. He was better against Scotland, but still not great. Uh, or Legarek, who was lively. You know, that's that's his DNA, basically. That's his uh, point of difference. Will they start with Legarek and get after this team and try and bring some energy to France from the start of this game? I'm not sure. Dante at 12... I think he's looked, he doesn't look fit to me. He looks heavy and he just doesn't look quite as dynamic, as in shape as he has done in his glorious best. So I wonder whether there's an opportunity to bring somebody in there. Um, let's see. This is what I'm going with. I'm going to say they'll start with Luku. I think they'll start with the experience and I expect Legarek to get quite a few more minutes off the bench this week than he has done previously. Wouldn't be surprised to see him on the pitch around the 50-minute mark. And then I'm going for it. I'm going to make the change in the centres. I think Dante's form really hasn't warranted to be kept in there. Fiku's played a lot at 12 for France in the past, and I don't see any reason why he can't do it again. Dorian Deportier, the Bordeaux centre, who's been flying this season, a youngster with a ton of potential. And it'll be great to see him in the on the international scene. OK, moving on to the bench. And we will swap Mavaka in there and Antonio. Uh, Tarpanua to keep his place as a loose end sub. Although Danny Preso, the really experienced Danny Preso, is also in the squad. And both these guys played this weekend, just gone, played 50 minutes or so. So, you know, there's no indication there about which one will get the bench spot. But I'm going to stick with Tarpanua. Tulangi Woki moving onto the bench. Great cover for second row and back row. Boonant to carry on as well. And Dante to wear the number 23 shirt, as I think 12 is the only position they don't have covered in that back line. Ramos can cover 10 and then everybody else can push out, push out one if necessary. This is a very strong looking France team to me, but will they show up? Will they have that energy about them? Will they really like demand a performance from each other to take on this Italy team? What do you think? Do you think this is the team that's going to get selected? Do you think it's the right team to beat Italy? And do you, well, do you think they're good enough to beat Italy? Don't forget that Italy very, very nearly beat France at the beginning of last year's championship. So let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a good old chinwag. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.